Okay, the purpose of this video is to introduce you to the Physics Toolbox Sensor Suite. This is it right here. I've already opened it up. We're going to use the Linear Accelerator. And if you click on that, you'll see a graph like this. Now, I'm going to show you how this works real briefly. First, let me orient you to what is on the screen. I'm going to stop graphing by pushing the pause button. Top left corner on my iPhone, and maybe in a different spot if you're on an Android, is a breakdown of the accelerations in the different dimensions. We've got red is the X dimension. That's horizontal. Uh, green is the Y dimension. That would be the long axis of your phone. So like the top to the bottom. And then Z would be if you were able to put your finger through the screen, through the battery, and out the back side of the phone. That's the Z dimension. And those are all different colors. And then white shows the total acceleration for everything. Now the cool thing about this app is that not only can you see data in the graph, but you can also uh, scroll across and and get an estimation of, of how much acceleration you are seeing for, uh, from the graph. Now you can screenshot the graph, which is something that you'll want to do. And then you can also collect data in a data table by pressing that little red plus button in the bottom right corner. It may be in a different spot for you, depending on your phone. Let me show you how we actually run this and, uh, and how it works. So sometimes when I restart the data collection, I get this blank screen. If that happens, stop, refresh, or actually go back, click on the accelerometer again, and it'll start just fine. Okay, if I hold this phone vertically and I put it on the table, notice that the acceleration basically goes away because it's not jiggling anymore. If I pick it up, it feels some acceleration. Notice it's green. That's the Y direction because I accelerated upwards. I'm going to drop it straight down now. Boom. Giant green spike. That's what you're looking for in your data collection. That was an acceleration of, let's pause it, about nine. All right. What you're going to do then is strap this onto the cart. And once you do, you're going to put it on the ramp. And when you're ready, you're going to hit that little plus button and start collecting data. So let's do that. I'm going to refresh, connect it to the cart. That's what you're hearing me do. Put it up at the top of the ramp, align everything, and start collecting data. Now this looks weird a little bit, but that's okay. And then I'm going to hit the plus button, and data recording has started. It crashed, and now I'm going to stop the data collection, and now I'm going to save it to my files. And let's see, we'll save it here, call it sensor. There we go. I'm gonna pause this, and now. Dude. All right, so here's our data table, and what we're gonna do here is we have the time at the top left, left column, acceleration on the X, Y, and Z as we go across to the right, and then the total acceleration. And we wanna find where our collision occurred. And so I'm actually gonna scroll back up from the bottom and look for where the total acceleration stops being zero, because that's gonna be the collision. And there you can start to see right here so my collision at its worst had an acceleration in the y direction that's the one two third column over you can see it right there at the bottom of the screen negative 15.92 all right that was my worst y acceleration and we can see that it was a pretty short collision all right the time of the collision goes from and again from the look at the bottom of the screen where the collision went from being zero until it was zero again, which was about here. So my collision started at 3.36472 da, 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 seconds and ended at the next time it was zero, and that's 3.4749 seconds. So we can get the length of the collision from there. Once we know the length of the collision, um, and we know the mass of the phone and the uh, object, then we've got the, um, we've got the mass of the collision, um, we've got acceleration here. We could figure out uh, force from that, right? If we know mass and acceleration, we can figure out the force that people experienced, and you'll, you'll calculate that. And we could even figure out the change in velocity. So there's lots of things you can calculate with this data, and we're going to practice doing all that. And that's how you use this, and hopefully that helps.